Good morning, everyone. As always, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll begin our chapel this morning with confession of sins and absolution. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our lesson for this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, the second chapter, the eighth verse. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Paul's warning there to the Colossian Christians and to you and to me is to not be deceived. During the Civil War, there was a southern general and his army who came upon a military fort that was controlled by uh, northern army or northern forces. And when the northern troops refused to give up the fort, the southern general came up with a plan. He asked to have a meeting with the northern general, and as they met, he toured the northern general to see his encampments, his camps of soldiers. And so the generals would go and visit the first camp, and then as soon as the generals left, the southern soldiers there would quick pack up all their gear, their tents, their weapons and everything, and they'd hustle over to the next spot set it all up, the generals would arrive, generals would leave, they'd quick pack everything up, and the southern soldiers would go to the next site. And after touring around for a while and seeing a bunch of these camps, the northern general realized that it seems like they've got a lot of troops here, a lot of men, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to hold on to that fort. And so he surrendered the fort without a fight. What the northern general didn't realize, what he didn't know, was that those southern soldiers were moving from camp to camp. And he was seeing, each new camp he came to, he was seeing the same soldiers, the same soldiers from the last group that he had seen. The northern general had been deceived. As we look into our own personal lives and into our families' lives and in our country and our world, as we look at all these camps, all these things going on, and it seems like there's, it's insurmountable, all the problems that are out there, whether it's in our own lives or in our world, all these things that unnerve us, that unsettle us, that make us anxious, the devil is trying to get us to think that we can't win. We're outnumbered. And to get us to surrender. The devil is trying to get you to give in to despair as you wrestle with guilt from a particular sin. The devil is trying to get you to give in to despair when you look at your life and it hasn't quite worked out so far anyway, like you had hoped it would. 
Or the devil is trying to get each and every one of us to just give in to temptation, just surrender ourselves to our sinful nature, figuring we can't win anyway, so if you can't beat them, join them. And then we look out at our world and all the terrible, horrifying things going on, thousands of people dying in missile attacks, countries who are pledging war, and all the other things happening. The devil wants us to think that the situation is hopeless, that evil is winning. And that Jesus and his promises are no match for the sinful temptations and pleasures of this world. That Jesus and his promises are no match for the hopelessness and the evil that is at work in our world. What the devil doesn't want you to see is that it's all a deception. You know, those sins that plague you, those sins that tempt you, your Lord Jesus has washed them away, cleansed you with the shedding of his blood upon the cross. He's made you his child, and he's given each and every one of you the ability to say no to sin. And as we look out at all the chaos and the tension and the conflict in our, in our country and in our world, they are no match for our all-powerful Creator God who rules over the affairs of the world. He rules over the affairs of the world for the good of His church. That's believers, His family, that's you, that's me. The reality is that God is in control. The reality is that Jesus has already won. Evil is not winning. God has won. And the Lord makes promises to us, promises to be with us and to see us through this difficult life in this sin-filled world and to take us to be with him in heaven. As Mr. Sharon mentioned in our prayer this morning, God is faithful. He is faithful to his promises. And so now what? What do we do while we wait? for God to fulfill that promise to take us to be with him in heaven. As we look out and seemingly in our world, there's a lot of hopelessness, there's a lot of despair, there's a lot of evil. That's what the devil wants you to think. But don't be deceived. In his word, the Lord makes very clear to us, Matthew chapter 24, the book of Revelation, and many other places, that life for us as Christians in this world is going to be difficult. But we are sustained by Jesus' forgiveness. And we are sustained by God's loving care and protection. We are buoyed by all the promises the Lord has made to be with us, to not give us more than we can handle, and on and on and on. And we are commissioned by him to make an impact on the lives of all those around us with our words, our attitudes, and our actions. And so that forgiveness, that loving care and protection, all those promises, those are for you. So as the difficulties of life and the things we see in our world swirl around, and it seems like evil is winning, don't ever forget. Don't be deceived. Because Jesus has already won. And that means you have too. 
With that in mind, we'll sing our Lord's praises. We'll sing hymn 800. in prayer. Lord Jesus, we have at times given in to despair and guilt and hopelessness as we have fallen for the deceptions of the devil. Please forgive us for looking anywhere but at you and doubting your promises. Only through your life and your blood, only because of your love, do we have purpose and direction and joy and hope in our lives. May we live each day with confidence, with Jesus' victory on our hearts, and in our minds, as we impact the people, as we impact the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.